Hello, Saints. We all know that hard work and dedication is the way to success. But the path is not always easy or exactly clear. This is just a part of life. But the Word of God is here to guide and motivate us during the most toughest times of famine, corruption, COVID, and world recession. God wants us to strive in all aspects of our lives, and He gave us the tools, the talents, and the gifts to do just that. It's easy to forget sometimes, but the Word of God in the biblical chapters and verses reminds us that God is always standing by our side when we work hard. So whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for people. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. The good news is that no matter what you do, you are using the gifts that the Lord gave to you. If you put your talents to use, you are proving to God that you love Him and worship Him. Even in dark and confusing times, do whatever is needed without doubt or hesitation. If you choose to work hard and keep your head down, others will follow the lead. We sing to God, praise Him. What a mighty God we say, 747. this place of worship and give you all the glory for you are worthy of our praise hear us as we come before you confessing our sins for we have not done right we have not lived according to the way you have guided us to live and in many instances we have followed our own hearts instead of following like the word has said to us. Forgive us, Lord. And as you forgive us, also teach us to forgive those that have wronged us so we cannot carry grudges or fears, so we cannot carry heavy loads of anger. 
you know, pastor, to, to sacrifice for your word and for the good of others. Remove the idols that you always worship. For we have replaced you with materialistic worldly things. Remove them as we, as we forgive and are forgiven. Hear us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We sing the song of praise for the forgiveness of our sins. As for me and my house will serve the Lord. Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise Him. Praise the Lord with the heart. Make music to Him on the ten stringed lyre. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all He does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. 
The earth is full of his unfailing love. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in favor. This second scripture reading is taken from uh, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. <coughs> we are reading at verses 1 to 7. In those days when the number of the disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews, among them complained against the Hebraic Jews, the Grecian Jews are the Jews that are great, and the Hebraic Jews are the Jews that are Hebrews. I'll start again. In those days when the number of the disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who, know, who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and to the <coughs> ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. And the last scripture reading is taken from the epistle, the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 2. We are reading at verses 4 to 9. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into the spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, the one who trusts in him, will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. May the good Lord bless to us the reading of his word, and to him be all the glory and honor and power and dominion. Amen. We prepare our hearts to listen to the word of God by singing hymn 162, Servant King.
Lord, the theme of this Sunday is service and ministry. Service and ministry. On one May, was it yesterday, we were celebrating Workers' Day. This practice started in India in 1923 and celebrated on May 1 every year. It also used to be called the Labor Day. The day is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of workers. It is celebrated to honor the dedication and contribution of the working community to the growth of the nation. It is now celebrated internationally and sometimes it is called May Day. In South Africa, this day has been officially recognized and observed since the first democratic dispensation in 1994. We celebrate all the workers. St. Paul in 2 Thessalonians writes that if a man will not work, he shall not eat. No work, no food. Proverbs 14 verse 23 says, Prosperity comes from hard work, but talking too much leads to great scarcity. Last Sunday, Kevin practiced the mystery of baptizo. Remember? Where are my culprits? Baptizo. Sinking ship. Immersion. And two of our sisters, by Anne and Natalie, congratulations. Now, the real work of service, Koinonia, starts. The fifth Sunday of Easter, which is today, refers to ministry and service. All the liturgical readings for this week focus specifically on the notion of service and ministry. Here we see the apostles asking the community to select amongst its own members for the ministry of service so that they, the apostles, could concentrate on prayer and ministry of the word. This fits a pattern for the early church. The priest would serve the community by being persons dedicated to prayer, teaching, and presiding of the sacrament of the Holy Communion. And members of lady, both men and women, would take ownership of the other aspects of their community life. The first epistle of St. Peter, apparently written around 78, 70 to 90 AD, to the Christian communities located in the five provinces of Asia Minor, addresses the difficulty of living the Christian life in a hostile, secular environment that upheld different values and subjected the, the Christian community to ridicule and oppression. The author reminds the people, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a royal priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Now I want you to look at yourself. Look at the house. Pick up the piece of material in the house and tell me what you are. Are you a wardrobe that keeps the clothes? 
Are you a cowboy that keeps cookery and cutlery? Are you a chair on which people sit? Are you a table where people eat comfortably? You must be built into their spiritual house because you are a royal priesthood. This is what Peter tells us. And he assures those Christians that they are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that they may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. When we are given an opportunity to rediscover the original model of the church, we begin to realize that more and more lay men and women have been invited to use their gifts and their charisma for the service of the community of believers. More and more of the laity understand that they are the church. Yes, we've got ordained clerics like myself, Kevin, Mark, and others. Yes, we've got deacons. Yes, we've got people that have been set aside for ministry. But they are not the church. You are the church. And this is the church building. So when next time when you come to church, those are going to church, say this church is going to the church building. For I have a ministry to offer you tell yourself. We should come to understand that our faith rests not on the organization called the church, but in the person of Jesus Christ who himself gathers this community, this church together. The passage in Acts reminds us how far we still are from being the community Christ intends us to be. But first Peter calls each of us to look at ourselves and so I call upon you church. So that you look at the dignity of our call to service. The dignity of the community to which we are called to serve. In the Gospel of St. John, Jesus commissioned his disciples to bring his healing power of forgiveness, allowing us to reconcile ourselves with one another and also with God. He also showed his disciples by example what it means to be compassionate and to minister one to another. He says to them, when you minister to one another, this is the ministry. Follow my guide. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. The world today has filled our hearts with so much information. That's what you go wrong. We have technology. They call it now the fourth industrial revolution. This is in our fingertips. There are so many opinions that have actually polarized our nation. It seems that things in life are speeding up so fast that we cannot even catch our breath. But over and above that, we live in terrible, difficult, and hard, hard times where we also have violent crimes. Consequently, people are basically searching for three things. Some are looking for direction. Where is the way? Others are looking for something real. Not in Cocotella. 
what is the truth. And others still are looking for something that is going to last forever. What is life? And Jesus summed all these expectations and all these questions in one verse. In John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way. People are looking for direction. They say that there are many directions to reach heaven. Whatever feels best for you. Do whatever is right in your own heart, in your own eyes. But the Bible in Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 says, Enter the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by it. Jesus did not tell his disciples about the way or show them the way or guide them along the way. No. But he said, I am the way. How can we know the way to God? Church is only through Jesus Christ. Thank God that he made a way for us to get to him. For God is there when we are angry, when we are confused, when we are scared, when we are running away from him, and when we are too busy for him, he still finds a way for us to go back to him. And he says, I am the truth. People are looking for the real thing. They don't want something funny or artificial or fun or a movement or a whim. They want something legit. They want something genuine. They want something real. And Jesus says, I am the truth. Check here. Truth is not a concept. It's a person. This means that we can never know the truth of our circumstances unless we first know Jesus. Remember the story of the disciples in the storm. They thought that they were perishing and they cried out, Lord, Lord, where are you we perishing? He rose from sleeping. They didn't realize the truth was sleeping under the ship. They cried, Lord, serve us. But they didn't realize their situation was already under control. I am the life. People are searching for something that will last forever. Yes, life. We wish life would never end. Somebody tells us a story of this old woman who was a Christian and was going to church, but the taxi driver dropped so badly that she began to say, Hey, hey, driver, why are you driving so badly? I don't want to die yet. And the taxi driver would respond, I actually thought you were going to church. Don't you sing the chorus, I want to get to heaven in the morning? <laughs> we, we wish life would never end. We would wish that when you go on vacation, it will last forever. We wish that when we win the lottery, we would be set for life. It's not all about this. No, not at all, church. Jesus is life. He said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He further said, I am the bread of life. I have the words of eternal life. Whoever finds me, finds life, and whoever believes in me has eternal life. I want to conclude 
with Philip's famous statement recorded for all time. Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. These words sum up the entire purpose and direction of the human journey. They articulate the basic longing of our hearts to see God, to know God, and to love Him. But beyond that, to serve Him. Philip speaks for all of us when he says to Jesus, we really need only one thing to see God. Show us that and we'll be satisfied. But Jesus answered with the words that are equally critical for us when he says, when he says Have I not been with you for such a long time? And you still do not know me. Everything that you are looking for can be found in Jesus. All your questions can be answered by him. Turn to him while he can be found. It is time, church, to get involved in the ministry of St. John's for Jesus' sake. Jesus has said so many things and has given us so many things. How involved are you? If not, what is your excuse? A friend of mine Send this to me. Now I want to check where you stand. She sent me this. What excuses have you been using to avoid the ministry? Or are still using to avoid the ministry? Do you think you are because you are old? No. Abraham was. Or you think that you are insecure? No. So was Jacob. Or you think you are being looked at distantly? We don't say people are ugly. We say we see them distantly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that people see you as unattractive? Forget it. So was Leah. Very unattractive. Or you say, I have been abused all my life. So was Joseph by his own brothers. Or you say, I cannot speak, I'm a stutterer, I cannot speak properly. So was Moses. Or you think, I've got nothing, I'm a poor person. So was Gideon. Oh, you think, oh Lord, I'm so dirty, I'm so immoral, I'm so unethical, I cannot see the world. But so was Rahab, who, when we check, has actually got the lineage of Jesus Christ. Or oh, you say, I've got so many family challenges. David had an affair. Oh, you feel, oh God, I'm so suicidal. I cannot take the ministry. So was Elijah. Are you reluctant? Who is this one who was sent to Nineveh and went to Tarshish? Jonah. Or oh, are you depressed? So was the prophet Jeremiah. Oh yes, are you impulsive? And are you hot to the bar? Yeah. <laughs> so was Peter. Somebody say, I cannot do the ministry and offer service precisely because I worry a lot about things. So was Martha. Where is your excuse? Or you think that you've, got, you've had a failed relationship and had a failed marriage. So was the Samaritan woman. All right, you think I'm popular. 
So was Zacchaeus. You think you're doubtful? So was Thomas. You think I'm so weak and my health is failing me? So was St. Paul. My friend concludes, and I quote her, the party. That is quite a variety of misfits, but God used each one of them in his service. He will use you too if you stop making excuses in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We've got uh, the church council on Wednesday and on Thursday. On Thursday for the church council meeting and I hope that the chairman will be receiving lots of uh, uh, small notes. Chairman, this is what I can do for St. John's. No more excuses. These are what I can offer. Because this fifth Sunday says, what are you doing for God in terms of ministry and service? We don't come to warm the pews. We come to offer the service. So the church may grow. Amen. 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 We celebrate Holy Communion. We pick up our, our elements as we celebrate Holy Communion. If, some, if, some, if someone came here and thought to any meeting and say, hey, there's a big range of agreement here, but I'm going to go to everybody. I'm in agreement. Come and ask pray. Yea, house Father, through Christ the Son, our Lord, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may receive these gifts of bread and wine, which are his body and blood. Who oh, on the night that he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks. He brought it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, proclaiming the saving death and resurrection of the Lord, we come to you to celebrate this holy sacrament with this bread and this wine. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we may be renewed by your Spirit and grow into his likeness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, and in whom all honor and glory be yours, Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On the night of the trade, he took the bread. We took, we take our slices and you broke it. You break it yourself with me. He gave thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat.
you, Lord Jesus, for hanging on the cross and dying for the remission of our sins. We glorify your name. We thank you even for this sacrament, Holy Communion, where we sit and we share together your body and your blood. So that at the end of the day, we would be built in to the spiritual house. Show us what we are supposed to do. Reveal yourself to us and give us responsibilities to bring our gifts, our talents, and grow the church. Bless this good to our bodies and you bless us to yourselves. In Christ's name. Amen. Are there any intimations? May I request one of you apart from my wife and uh, uh, Apart from these two, I want any of you to stand up and say to me, I will not None of you can actually pronounce that. You can. Let's go. I <laughs> we 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 we've got visitors from N Kirk. Right, let's have the N. Uh, yeah, no, the N Kirk is the is, is the abbreviation, right? What's the full name? Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> they are visiting us. Uh, their minister is out at, at Hawksburg and they're here to worship with us. Can you say shine to them? Sure. Thank you for joining us. Um, yes, on Thursday, 6 30 pm, is the council meeting, and we still have uh, these uh, Presbyterian Pie collection of recipes. From the, con the congregation to celebrate its 150th birthday. Unai, Unai, Unai. That's my wife I'm talking to. You don't know my wife? There she is. Papa, baby, my boy. That's my wife. You say shine to her. The most beautiful thing God ever created. <laughs> Uh, these are still available for, for, for us to buy uh, at 50 rands per book. We continue to pray for Dion Ferreira as on Tuesday he'll be going for the bypass in Quebec for my reporter Isabel. Right, uh, birthdays. Rohan Fetty. What's going on? No. Okay. We'll have some chocolate there. Let's remember that all the time we ought to bring our bread and wine for communion Sundays. That is the first and the third Sundays of the month. Other than that, is there any other notice? All right, organized. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes our worship. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing to God's glory the closing hymn 1261. Brother, sister, let me serve you.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, bless, remain, and abide with us all, now and forever. Amen. We now sing the Benedict, the, the doxology.